I did find out on the hand raising. Yes. Uh, Microsoft came out with a press release on the 19th of March announcing hand raising as a new feature. And then the fine print, it says it will be rolled out later this year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So it by the time hopefully the, the fall meeting comes up for anybody who is doing it virtually, uh, we will have that feature then. Uh, there, there's also, I guess, a private chat feature that they're going to have included with it. So I'm surprised it took them. This is the third anniversary of Microsoft Teams. I'm surprised it took them three years to come up with a hand raising feature, but but that's the story and uh, we're sticking with it. OK, well, and, and you know what's interesting was that I had no idea that Microsoft Teams was a thing until MITRE rolled it out. So if they've been three years in the making, it's been a three quiet three year period for them. Well, it has. The first first I heard of it was last summer uh, when I was having problems with my MITRE computer and uh, they thought it might be the Skype uh, app that was causing the problem. It was not. But in the course of discussion with the help desk, they said, oh, yeah, Microsoft Teams is coming and it's going to replace Skype. So that was the first I had ever heard of, but then I heard nothing else until about a month ago. Sorry, guys, I'm eating lunch while we talk, so continue. Lunch. So, so how are you doing, Matthias? How's uh, how's life in uh, in Boulder in in, uh, in your yours doesn't look? Oh, that's great. I love that. That's a that's a nice bunker view there, isn't it? We got uh, on Easter about a foot of snow. Then by yesterday, it was all melted. This happened overnight again. Another foot of snow. Really. Where, where are you located in relation to uh, Boulder proper? Um, uh, in Boulder itself. Oh, really? So yep. they got that much at that elevation? Yep. That's I thought crazy. maybe you were up Flagstaff yeah. Mountain there or something. No, 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 no. <laughs> Boulder itself. That's in my backyard. <laughs> wow. That's that's uh, that's some. Um, well, it looked like a nice wet late late spring snow. So I lived in Salt Lake for seven years back in the 70s. And um, so our record 24 hour snowfall um, and we were up on the east bench, which was actually about 400 feet above the uh, airport elevation in the lake uh, was in early April. We had 36 inches in 24 hours and it was one of those lake effect, you know, where the Salt Lake had uh, warmed up rapidly with uh, with a warm march and then all of a sudden that cold front came across it picked up all that salt and warm air and uh, 36 oh, inches the only time lifting and then you get the machine oh yeah over. yeah yeah it was a classic uh, lake effect local lake effect all right matthias what we got <laughs> uh oh is it me have i lost everybody i can hear you yeah Ready? i can hear you matthias uh, yeah, no me. no audio no video yeah i just turned his um must be the snow. You know, that's another feature that, <laughs> that we might. Can you hear him? No, no that was Mike Robinson. <laughs> oh, that was Mike. Uh, that's another feature that if people are in a bandwidth challenged area, you can turn off incoming video that, that can help your bandwidth. Um... Sorry, guys, I was bumped. Somehow I, I lost it and mm. Coming back in now, I actually see the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's empty because it only what's coming in new now I can see, but that's yeah. just what it is. Now getting back to the slides, but I guess I would have to take share the screen again Please. to see if I captured it properly. Let me grab the screen here again and put this up. And that hopefully works. So I tried to 
get this going, but I'm not sure I was good enough to capture the essence in a proper way because there was a lot of discussion and I may have missed some key things or how to capture it. What do you say, Matt, in terms of Matt Franzak or Dave, in terms of what I captured here? How do we need to maybe put bullets underneath or combine things or? Well, so so I, I did hear, you know, some conversation about your numbers three and four there. Uh, I think it was Gary who said that, that they, they, they kind of um, complemented one another. Maybe we're part of one session. But again, I, I, I think if, if those if those just general topics, each one was built out, it could easily be a day by itself. So I, I don't see any way to combine three and four. I could see one following the other if, if we did it right that that might help us you know, to segue from one to the other. That that seems to make sense. Um, the other thing that that um, that that uh, somebody on the on the chat. I think it was Tom Ryan. Yes, it's it's our 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 administrative conscious uh, consciousness conscience. Tom Ryan said was. Let me see if I can go back and find it here. Um, I suggest that future agendas have somewhat of a business approach with old business and new business sections for the agenda. Keeping folks up to date and aware will, I think, provide benefits. Um, and, and that certainly is true if and when we, you know, we spin up a tiger team or, a, 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 you know, a, a focus group or whatever to, to work on something, we would need to have some sort of a, 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 a an update just like you have right there. Yeah. So I'm um, just pop back in. My intention was to include that generally. In other words, that we keep track of the things that we've worked on or talked about. So forgive me, Gordy, if you're listening, but that there would be a um, old business topic for VWAS in the next meeting, that kind of thing. That's what I'm, so that we keep it up to date and relevant, and and there'll be um, stuff moving forward that people will then uh, react to because it wasn't really relevant to them before. But oh, I see that now. Let me talk about this. All right, that's enough. Thank you. Something Thanks. like this. Thanks for that. This is Steve Dar. I, I was going to say earlier when we were talking about actions and, and whatnot that. The ADSB weather stuff has been a uh, something that wasn't signed out of FBA, but FBA has, has provided real opportunity to keep people informed. Um, and yeah, I go back to my desk uh, between briefings. But I'm working on it, and and so are others. And and it's uh, you know getting that update seems to be appreciated. Uh, so. I think FBA, you know, really provides an opportunity for keeping track of things that are being done, even if it wasn't the genesis of what's being done. So this could be a standing topic, a, a standing brief session, a catch all for various things that are ongoing with maybe 20 minute updates or so at most. Yeah, that, I mean that, that's what I was thinking. Whether it's twenty minutes, thirty minutes, uh, you know, but 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 some way to, um, you know, for active topics that 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 are are you know, um, evolving, um, you know, some way to keep to keep everybody up to date, and and if there's an issue within it that FPA gets involved in, to update that particular aspect of things too. Good, and and I'd encourage that when a briefing is given like Gordy's and John's and Scott's that uh, we uh, at the end of it make the request for an update at the next meeting so that it's automatically put into the agenda. Uh, Matt, I don't know if you saw um, Marilyn Pearson had a comment there about might we use social media uh, for updates on these topics. Yeah, 
Yeah, I did. Uh, I did, okay. and that's that's. I'm I'm just sitting here. That, that that's that's interesting, and and um, yeah, yeah, maybe uh, and especially because of of you know, well, I'm not sure I could single out one versus the other. Maybe social media for updates is is a is a um, a way to go. Um, but to me, they often seem to be short snippets, higher level, or a unique detail, oh, this and this happened. And we may want to have a little more depth to it with these updates. And so it's kind of two different flavors, I see. Perhaps, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, the we've got two platforms, well, three really, that would allow that. First of all, we could put a blog on a web page, uh, which could offer detailed analysis. Uh, and then both LinkedIn and Facebook have uh, plenty of room for putting uh, detailed updates. I mean, really, Twitter's the only social media platform that's really limited. But, you know, and the, the nice thing about uh, both LinkedIn and uh, Facebook is that we can start conversations. Uh, and, and I think that's something that maybe, you know, we ought to think about more between now and the fall than we have in the past. We have an opportunity to have conversations after yesterday's meeting and before the fall meeting. Just my humble opinion here, Kozak talking. <laughs> the, the fact that you don't have your video on must mean that that, that you are you are now completely pandemic casual top and bottom no i just don't want you to watch me pick my nose that's all okay very well I just let that. <laughs> matt let the record show that i think my beard is no longer than john cossack's whoa really really <laughs> show that's your face yeah, right, yeah 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 it, it, it's not true unless you show us then you have to open up your camera there you go ah, am i am i am i more than john cossack i don't know thanks robin Cossacks is, is white in your stick here. Yeah, give, give me another week. <laughs> yeah, but mine's going to keep growing too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, goodbye. <laughs> Matt? Yes, ma'am, Meryl. Oh, look, you can hear me without uh, uh, an annoying feedback. I'm happy to uh, find that. Um, I'm technologically challenged, I think. Uh, we were talking about trying to determine what topics might rise to the top. I mean, a lot of uh, organizations use surveys and that sort of thing. And perhaps we put together all of these uh, topics that we've looked at and maybe push that out to the membership and see uh, who's interested in what and what sort of response you get for those topics. And then maybe pick the top three or four or however many. Yeah, that, that, that actually uh, fits in with, with a comment that Matt Eckstein made earlier about, you know, inadvertently um, covering up um, a valid topic simply because there's there's there, there's so many places where weather goes and, and so many um, um, flavors and, and categories and nuances within it that that, um, you know, we, we need to have a way to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> so you, you know what, Matthias? It, it it appears that although we gave everybody permission to to go, to to leave for 15 minutes, everybody is still on and listening and thinking. <laughs> oh, that's good. I I appreciate the the commitment and the engagement here. <laughs> Tableman <laughs> <laughs> had an interesting comment there on whether we should plan to a remote and an in-person option. It's just we should talk about that. You you see that here uh, at yep. yep. In yeah, some it's what we did for for this meeting and then we just modified it and moved something out 
So we would have to then just prioritize which is the one we want to carry on for sure and which one we may be able to defer. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I must say, uh, you know, from my perspective as kind of, you know, quote running, unquote, the meeting yesterday, uh, six and a half hours of focusing is tough. <laughs> I was I was ready to go to bed by the time I was done. <laughs> yeah, I, I was wiped, but I had to do a few other things afterwards. Yeah. And Andy McClure earlier, uh, about 20 minutes ago, as we were as we were, I, I think it was in response to um, um, my comment about those two topics looking like they're eight hours a piece. He asks, time to go quarterly with two online and two in person. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did we take all that time from? <laughs> all right. It seemed like it took uh, people a little time this morning to sort of warm up to the, the subject of uh, suggesting new topics. But once they did, like you said, uh, each line on that slide I'm seeing right now uh, could easily be hours and hours of talking. So, <laughs> yep. you know, if you can't do it all in one, one sitting, well, take smaller bites. <laughs> And yeah, yeah I, I did volunteer for one. I'm sorry, Marilyn. Go ahead. Uh, I volunteered for one. I sent. I think Matt and Matthias. I think I sent you an email, both of you. Oh, there's too many different medias to keep track of. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the UTM UAM um, UAF topic, I think the first one on the other page. Um, I volunteered myself with. Don. Okay, I see it. Yep. Yeah, that would be a good one. Uh, and and Andy, uh, I, I mean, I I know you know this, but but since we are an all volunteer group, <laughs> four meetings a year sounds like a a one hell of an all volunteer load <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> But anyhow, well, right. those of us approaching uh, retirement, you're going to have to find something to keep us busy. <laughs> you know. There's another uh, another one of uh, um, another comment, uh, not not comment, suggestion from Kevin Johnston was to to have a session on the FAA weather COI, and <laughs> he nominates Bill Bauman to lead the session. <laughs> yeah. And isn't Alfred part of that too? Yes. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Alfred, <laughs> come chair. <laughs> I, I may be sitting here eating my sandwich for lunch, but I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> and Matthias, you can um, add me with Don, not just make it. Uh, yeah, yeah, not, yeah. Not yeah. just done the entire thing. Thank you. <laughs> Poor Thank you. I, I have not gotten that far. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't volunteering him um, separately to do the entirety of it. Looks like Gordy has a wants to get a word in edgewise. Yeah, I'm muting. Okay, perfect. I uh, just got a couple qu uh, comments back to. Um, I guess Mike Robinson made a comment about opportunities arising from the pandemic. Uh, just as a, this is an FYI for the group. Uh, we're kind of faced with a situation uh, that's happening in Europe right now. And uh, apparently some countries still use um, certified weather observers to take ceiling and visibility values. And uh, uh, they're running short or they're, they're part of the uh, COVID. Um, they've, they've come down with it. So something's happened. So, uh, for example, in Venice, uh, recently the the METAR stopped reporting ceiling visibility, and so uh, I got a request from UPS on on what what we can do to address that. Um, 
I, to me, I think that this 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 virus here is going to get us to to think outside the box a little bit more than we already are trying to do. Um, so, you know, there, there is there's opportunity. Uh, every every uh, every crisis provides the the ability to have some opportunity, and um, <clears throat> I think that that's this will do the same as this ebbs and flows and evolves. Um, the other the other comment I have on the um, on the forecast piece that Steve Edelman was, um, and and this is an overall comment. I guess for for any one of these panels is to make sure we uh, have the appropriate um, FAA slash National Weather Service person assigned to attend or, or or be a part of the panel because there's a lot of things that that can come of this that require whether the Weather Service to do something, the FAA to do something, um, policy regulation. There's, there's all sorts of things that 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 these breach or broach on. So it, it would be good to make sure we have um, uh, at least uh, this this identified. And and I'll, I'll toss this on Bill Bauman since uh, uh, Bill, you're running AMGC6 and we run everything through you. Um, maybe you can think um, or at least put some thought into who in your organization um, would be involved in these panels. Um, but just just some thoughts on uh, on what's been stated so far. Yeah, I'm sure we, we could support that. Um, you know, we have a broad range of folks from our requirement service to policy to our aviation weather research to WIDIC. Um, so uh, I'm sure we could find the, the folks with the right expertise. To your point, Gordy, I, I think the weather service, I, I know I have had some conversation with um, Brian Pettigrew, I think who was part of this group here, and, and he's reached out and said he'd be interested in helping on any forecast uh, panel, but the, the National Weather Service is, especially from, from DC perspective, is, is very missing from this group. I, I don't, you're correct. I mean, we, we, we need more weather service leadership support on this team um, to, going forward. I. I find that disturbing a little bit. Yeah, you know, that's that's an excellent point, Steve. And, and I will tell you, I mean, there's, there's there's great people working in the weather service. I know you're I know you're not picking on any one person, but um, I, I can tell you my discussions with um, uh, with Mike Kraft, for example, uh, you know, he, he, he's really key on um, making the task better. And and really, it's like what can we do to for the value added to the TAF? And let me just throw an example out there. And I know you're kind of aware of this, aware of this because American Airlines has has authority, as does United, to use what we call performance-based fuel planning for international operations. And this fuel planning requirement, um, you know, but I'll, I'll take United since they operate at two different levels. American operates at one level, but the, the the trigger to operate at a at a higher um, uh, uh, a, at the higher level, it, one of the triggers is that uh, convective activity is not in the vicinity of the airport, and and the thought process is around that is that the thunderstorm doesn't necessarily have to impact the terminal to have an impact on the terminal, and and so the dispatchers are kind of you know taught to broaden their their scope a little bit, even though the forecast might not be for half mile TSRW plus, um, that you know uh, within 20 miles of that airport may have a significant impact on fuel planning. And so when, when we talk about value added to the TAF, or you talk about the TAF in the future, the future of the TAF, um, I, I would like to think a little bit outside the box on what what value we can add. You know, so. Just, just food for thought, but you know, I, I'd like to toss some of the names out there for the for the weather service and, and see maybe we can maybe we can guilt them into attending. Sounds good. So <clears throat> these are some of the topics that we listed and some that came up through the discussion or through the chat room. 
So I'm just trying to firm up here things and then try to also see would it fit more in a spring meeting or a fall meeting in terms of the topic or the key people we may need for that session. And uh, then we can go and see can we actually fit it into a meaningful uh, draft, sketched agenda, etc. So some of the things we had here, let's see, Marilyn uh, Pearson suggested something on uh, UAS, uh, ur urban air mobility and unmanned aerial systems, and also the whole standards are going along with it. And she volunteered Don Birchoff to help, and the, there's certainly a lot going on there that this would make an interesting uh, discussion. Another suggestion was that we maybe talk about this weather community of interest from the FA and get this more uh, broadly known and see how how the community can interact with the FAA, etc. And so there was a name volunteered, but uh, the person was kind of not so happy, I gather. Or Bill, are you taking that back and would be able to and willing to to run with this? When you say take it back, you're talking about take it to the community of interest. <clears throat> no, <laughs> when I started typing your name, you started speaking up. Oh. And I took the name off again. <laughs> so. No, 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 no. Yeah, you could certainly put my name there. I'm sorry. Um, that's not a problem. I was just teasing that Alfred had nominated me, considering he's one of he and I are the current co-chairs. Oh, yes. Alfred! It, Alfred didn't nominate you. I thought you said that. No. no. No, it was Kevin who made that suggestion, and then yes. I said, "Wasn't Alfred part of that too?" And would have typed the name down, and maybe we need both of you on there. Yes. Okay, I got it. it. So that was Kevin it, Johnston. Yeah, and, and Bill, if if you want some help with that, you and Alfred, you can put me uh, down if if uh, there's some assistance I can provide. OK, well, I might just ask for Kevin's help then if he was the one that uh, made this suggestion. <laughs> you mean delegate? That's it. Kevin, are you still on? I nominate Kevin. <laughs> yes, I am. I heard that. <laughs> I, I think we'll, if, if things continue to evolve, I think we'll we'll have a whole lot more um, maybe to suggest here. So, so. okay, but you, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking would be you know pretty far along. I would think, Bill, and with all the discussion that it's gotten today, with you know how would we interface with. Uh, FPA and things like that it would be good. It would be a good session. Yeah, I think so. I agree. Would this be a better suited for spring or fall? I I would hope that. Well, our our plan is to have the first meeting of this have occurred before the fall meeting, um, but. You know, there there may well I don't know. Uh, there there may be more meat by the time we get to the spring meeting. Bill, what's your thought on that? Yep, I, I was thinking the exact same thing. You know, we should have had our first meeting by the time we have the fall FPA, but having maybe one meeting, maybe two under our our belt, there won't be much meat to the COI at that point. So the spring might be better. And why I'm saying the spring or sort of looking towards the spring also is we still have the uh, federal aviation weather review on on the docket for next spring and that would actually nicely fit with that other theme or could be part of that other theme. And, and I'm not sure how true this next piece of information is, but what we're hearing from our senior leadership about return to work at FAA. They're looking out at September now. Yep, I hear similar things from our side that uh, it's at least going to be summer. Yep. Well, well, we can certainly report out maybe just kind of a what what the current state is in the um, 
<clears throat> uh, fall meeting, but yeah, the spring. I mean, if that if that has any semblance of coming to realization that it's not going to be until after summer, well, then <clears throat> it's going to be um, probably a whole lot more to discuss next spring anyway. Is there a way that we could, instead of having it as a session topic, um, just do like a short update or status um, during the fall meeting? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the fact that Matias is typing. Oh, here it comes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd hate to ha go an entire year from now with yep. no information uh, to to the FPAW community. So we could update on what we've done, what the status is, whether or not we've met, how many times we've met, you know, kind of how things are going, um, but not an entire session. I Like you said, David, I just don't think we'll have the meet by the, by the fall. So this, this could go into this update, keeping track of topics uh, session. Yes. That would be one item in there. Yes. Okay. And Tom, I sort of put, Tom Ryan, I put your name down there because you volunteered the, the topic and I agree. And I know you're so well organized that you could be the steward of such a thing to keep us honest about what needs tracking and what we need to have here. So is that okay? Yes, sir. That's okay. That's okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and, and, and if I'm going to be if I'm going to be needled by somebody to do something that I promise to do, I think I'd rather be needled by Tom than almost anybody. <laughs> pleasant <laughs> pestering, huh? Yes, yeah, so pleasant pestering. Amen. Um, we, we do have actually one, two, three folks who wanted to uh, get a word in edgewise. If I may do this in order, Bill Watts wants to talk about the UAS topic. Okay. Yes, Matt, the only thing I wanted to add was that I think Don did a really good job yesterday of talking about the public-private relationship. And rather than and rather than call that the US UAS standards or whatever, I would just talk about a public-private thing because that's what drives the US community is, is making a profit. And I think we're gonna to have to start leaning leaning toward that model as we do the uh, weather community of interest that Bill's talking about. And I think they they would tie very nicely in, into doing that because it's got to be more than just uh, saying a particular segment. Like this? Yeah, I like that. I would, take the UAS, I would take the UAS out just so, because people say, oh, that's not me. Okay, now I have to go back to Marilyn Pearson and see whether that's still in her spirit or not. Or are we talking two different things that are related or overlapping? Marilyn, you're still on? Uh, yeah, I, I'm thinking. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean by public and private. I know that uh, the partnerships and the regulatory standards go hand in hand. And I know that our public and our partnerships are influencing rulemaking and standards. So, so So do I hear two separate things here? <laughs> I don't mind leaving the standards in. I, I'm just saying, if you just say UAS, people think, well, that's not me. I, the standards are fine. Why don't we say um, uh, new entrants as opposed to, I mean, if, if it's the UAS thing that says, I'm done, I'm out of here. Um, you know, do we call it n new entrance period? And then in, in essence, you're you're not only covering UAS, you could even even be talking about uh, commercial space in, in some ways. Well, Don articulated it very well yesterday when he he talked about the models that will be used to determine how we're going to move forward in, in gathering weather and the distributing and and, uh, you know, the the. the 
a UPS team can talk to that as well. So I, I, I just think there's there's a lot more than just UAS in there. That that's all I have. And and Justin was actually the next in the list to, with a comment also on this. So Justin, I think we just segued right into you. Yeah, that was a perfect flow there. Um, <laughs> there's there's you know everybody can have their own view of how this is going to work. Um, I'd be lying if I said UPS wasn't talking to all of the UTM providers that, that are out there right now, especially the top eight or so, to kind of see what direction this is going to go. Um, but I don't know that UTM would be premature to try to talk about how it's going to be at this point. Um, we could definitely say how we'd like to see the vision of that working out and how weather plays a part in that um, as far as sort of a vision. Um, and I have to say, I kind of disagree with Don um, on his stance that this is a certain weather that will be provided through the provider and that is your only option of what you get and you pay through the service to get that weather. Um, UPS has long had their own um, view that we don't trust anybody else with our weather out there, um, which is why we have the, our own meteorology department. Um, we've never contracted out any of the work to anybody. Uh, and we kept it in house because it, ultimately that affects our performance of our company. Um, so I think the it would be good to sort of explain what role weather will need to to play in the UTM as far as once we get out there. Um, the other the other part of that is right now we are one to one on flying our aircraft, our drones, and until we get one to many where we have one operator flying two drones or one operator flying five drones on at, at simultaneously. Um, the weather portion of that is still not feeding into there because the the machine learning and the AI to say, OK, you're flying along and there's a thunderstorm on your route. The drone needs to figure out on its own based off weather data that it needs to reroute itself in order to not pass through the thunderstorm. So uh, I think we have a long way to go um, with all of those topics. But it's sort of an intro to how that might look, I think, could be helpful from a UAS side. So, Matthias, maybe we do uh, a short intro and push this out to spring. Uh, from standards, um, I'm working with aircraft cert for weather standards for some of the UTM. So that was the perspective I'm coming from. Okay, yeah, and that's the other thing I was going to ask, kind of, if you could clarify where you, where your side was coming from with that, so that makes sense. But Matthias, would it be would it be perhaps worthwhile to um, to ask uh, Marilyn and Don and Justin and maybe Bill Watts to to get together and and you know see if in their discussions there is a um, you know, a, a half day, a four hour session to come out of that, that that makes sense for um, the fall meeting. I have a feeling the spring meeting is going to be a week long session or or if we're not careful here the way we're going. So you you want to have just those folks have a chat to see if there is something that uh, synergizes from this discussion or if they are really on different paths and, and that that's what i'm that's what I, i'm i'm feeling like we have two kind of different paths going here mm -hmm. uh, each of which probably deserves its own you know half day session but we're going to be into 2027 by the time we're, we're through allocating these half day sessions yeah i would as far as from my side i'm, I'm more than happy to help and present um but as far as what I could provide to this right now, I think that it would be really premature to try to predict what's going to happen, um, especially with the remote ID just coming out in, uh, you know, finalizing back in March. As far as the comment period closing, uh, we're, we're two to three years out probably before that even starts to become a thing. So uh, it'll be sort of a, a battle of the fittest right now in the UTM world and who ends up getting that competitive edge will end up being the ultimate um, person that gets to decide a lot of this stuff. Justin makes a really good point about uh, the implementation being a bit far out. So maybe we just do uh, a future look, uh, you know, a look ahead at, at expectations. 
Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe I mean it could be expectations and and ideas um, that are being explored at this point with the understanding that it will be a little while. <laughs> and, so, and does that does, does that does that nuance um, then enable us to have the efficacy of public private partnerships as one of the things that is being looked at? Yeah, I think that could be put together. So this is going to go in some ways like one. Like this. Yeah, so and, I, and I'm not against Don, so I don't want it to come off like that. Um, Don and I, we've spoken uh, much over the past couple of months and uh, he has great ideas as well. So I, I definitely don't want to make it come off that way. If you have opposite opinions, that really makes for stimulating discussions. Well, Don, the, the problem is Don is so shy and retiring that you, you got to be really careful the way you approach him. Yeah, I really have to pry a lot of times to get him to talk. <laughs> OK, so and, and I, we have to beg, I had to beg him to uh, partner with me on this. He was really reluctant to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> okay, so. Thanks, guys. So we have one area here that you four will kind of kick around and see where you take it. And you're looking at more of a springish time frame than a fall. Is that correct? I think that makes sense. Yeah, I would agree. OK. Let's pick up this one here, the opportunities from where we are sitting right now. Would the fall be too early to spend some thoughts on this? Mike, Matt, Franzek. Uh, I, I think the challenge here is, A, it might be too early, but on the other side, it also might be too late, um, <laughs> depending on how the you know, the opportunities may be slipping by us. You know, we're, all signs are pointing towards to Bill's comment, which I heard, and we're hearing kind of similar things that this really is going to last a while. But we don't know. Maybe I I don't I don't know. Um, if if it's something in the fall that you, folks and and the and the community want to be serious about, it's going to require some serious shaping and finessing between now and not so long from now to to make that a little bit more real. I like the way Gordy put a nice firm data point out there and something very tangible. Um, there, there are a few more of those that I think that are, out, are out there, but my mind goes to the larger prizes that are a little bit more abstract that I think need a little bit more thought. I don't know if that's that's probably just muddled everything up, but my point is, I think if you want to go after it, you, we have we have some serious homework to do. Yes. And I know how this is going. <laughs> Three of us. <laughs> yeah, it, it will take time. But we are starting to crowd the spring meeting if we really want to do a full day of like looking back at this here. The, the federal agency review does. Yeah, I, I almost think it's more timely for the fall meeting. Mm -hmm. in spring just, in, in a lifetime of this current crisis is almost a lifetime away. Right. Who knows You know what, what we can plan for? I mean, the spring is almost a post-mortem. At that oh. point, yeah. You know, because oh. there's a comment early on about making topics that we stand behind for FPAW actionable and we don't want you know I guess lessons learned are, are still actionable but I, th I think we're all kind of thinking of something a little bit um, bigger than that. But this could also just stirring up the, the thought process and understanding where the opportunities are so in that yeah. sense it's maybe not actionable that we have something tangible coming out of it but you know, laying out the landscape of of what the opportunities, the challenges, the trade offs yeah. are. I mean, that like alone is 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 potentially dense because it's it's so multifaceted and it's um it's 
it's multi stakeholder it's multi domain it's mm -hmm. it there there's there's many facets and, and you know and, and weather doesn't exist in a vacuum either i mean we're, when you're talking about it relative to what's going on by definition you're thinking about it in the context of broader operations broader integration um needs that have been sitting on the sideline with respect to x you know we have to you have to fill in all those blanks mm -hmm. maybe the three of us need a, a powwow offline to yeah. just start throwing things at the at the whiteboard and see what sticks or what may be practical to to pursue to a certain degree yeah i think that's good and we've been talking about this internally um at miter so we have some things that we're thinking about so maybe we, maybe we can do that and kind of on behalf of the group get, get a little more organized okay I um, I have two comments. Um, one is 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 the relationship between one's eyes and one's stomach, and then the the second is that Gordy Gordy Rother uh, you know had some great story a great story about the the Venice situation, and I suspect he has other um, examples that he can uh, perhaps point to on things that have come up um, as a result. So so yes, I, if he's willing, I would very much like to add him to our little cabal. Is Gordy still on and can chime in whether that's uh, acceptable to add his name here? Yeah, Mr. Mateus, I, I can be added to that, no problem. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would also say, and I think that's great, and I'd also say that we should we should reserve the right to reach out to others. Oh yeah, of course. You know, like like you know, Bill Bauman's group, uh, Kevin, um, airlines representatives, uh, wherever the conversation. Maybe you know, we'll do our homework first, maybe to try to get something shaped, and then depending on how that shapes, we can kind of go out a little bit more broadly and and help refine. Okay. Somehow, I feel like as we discussed those next two items here, that there was also some sort of overlap that I heard sentiments, they could go together in some fashion or another. Any thoughts on that? Matthias, this is Steve. I, you know, I, I would say that I'm a little concerned with the concept of pushing them together for this reason. You know, the, the, the cockpit weather idea concept is as much about bandwidth and capabilities and pilot you know the, the how much time the pilot has how much training the pilot has how much that's a very different very, a super important topic obviously but a, a very different topic than what the what's available from a science perspective and how accurate it is and how you know that would be my only challenges of, of bringing it apart uh, you know i know that matt Eckstein and i have, have talked about this in, in other forums before that the you know is the now casting forecasting you know products get better we still have to you know consider how the pilots have time to use those products so i, I don't know i i'm concerned about bringing them together because it, it, it's two very very you know long topics at some level and very complicated topics but i'm but i'm open to other ideas okay <laughs> That sounds good to me. Rocky, you have uh, an op opposing opinion about that? No, I, I agree with Steve. It, it is a very different subject. And, and actually, it, it deals more with the, um, I mean, in addition to, you know, what, what Steve mentioned of the limited bandwidth and the, the amount of, of, you know, whatever uh, forecast or graphical we can get in the cockpit, it, it, it also deals a lot with, um, what what are we allowed to do with it? What you know, and and um, we really need to. I would really like to push kind of the CDM community a little bit on, you know, hey, is this a way for you to be a little bit more nimble, um, you know, and as far as opening up routes sooner or you know things like that, um, you know, and and frankly, we're. Uh, yeah, we're we're stumbling a little bit with with our engagement with the CDM world, and and I'm I'm looking to this kind of to help us re-engage and and uh, you know 
get on track with, you know, hey, this is the information that's available in the cockpit. These are the elements that are needed to make decisions, and these are appropriate decisions. So I would really like to see a very actionable outcome like Gary talked about earlier. Hey, uh, Rocky, this is Kozak. Yeah. Um, are you involved with any of the uh, CDM um, committees right now? I mean, I know my yeah, boss is on the um, FET committee, and I think they're looking at something called A2D2 D2 or ATD2, something like that, um, That that's doing almost, well, not exactly what you said, but along those lines. Uh, as far as I think they're they're looking at weather as part of you know the communication uh, issue and opening and closing routes and that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, it's it, I, we are very involved with the future concept teams as opposed to the flow evaluation team. Okay. Um, and the ATD two that you mentioned is more of a ground a service on the ground for you know getting off the airport efficiently and and you know potential reroutes and things like that. And right. what I'm more focused on is, is you know, en route use of it. You know, do we have to fly the playbook routings? That, right. You know, the weather is not, it hasn't materialized as it was forecast to, you know, five or six hours ago. Um, right. How can we right. make the system a little bit more nimble to adjust to that? Yeah. And was there a NASA program that was looking at that a couple of years ago? There, there was DWR is uh, one of them, and uh, and there is uh, Tazar is another NASA program. They're both kind of looking at not directly at this issue, but they both kind of deal with it. Um, and you know, it's I agree that it, it could easily be a day long thing, but I think, <laughs> but, but but I also think that, and and the other thing is I I'm an advocate for trying to do it in the fall, mainly because. The CDM community beginning in about March, they become unavailable because uh, that is if we had a normal March. This wasn't a normal March. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so wait, let me let me just say that um, I, I'd be happy to do what I can to uh, help out with whatever it is you're planning because, uh, you know, I've been on the CDM wet team with Matt in the past and still with some others right now. So, um, yeah, put me down to help out. Yeah, OK. So this is Kevin. So I understood the, you know, uh, talk discussion about the graphical weather tools in the cockpit. But Rocky, given what you know, you're saying you've got some concerns about the effort uh, related to CDM. I, I'm just questioning: Is this the right form for that? Well, this is a form. I mean, this is certainly not the only. I mean, we are we are definitely addressing it in the CDM forms themselves. Um, but I think that it's important. The, the reason that I really would like to bring it to this forum is to, to get the community to get a broader understanding of the issues involved and they're way beyond just weather. But I mean, obviously weather is one of the key ones. Okay. So Rocky, would this be more of a spring or fall topic, or does it matter to you? Well, again, I would advocate for a fall topic, mainly just because uh, the CDM community, which I would like to engage in this also, is they're generally unavailable beginning in about March. Okay. Um, Good. What about Steve? So, so Matthias, this is Matt. May I ask Steve a question? Um, in your mind, Steve, how how long how long a session is this? Is this a is this eight hours? Is it four hours? Is it two hours? What what what's your thinking on that? Well, considering I just thought of it a little while ago, <laughs> that's a tough question, but. Um, you, you know, it, it really, I, I would fit it into whatever time slot we had. I, I mean, okay. you know, if we, if we had two hours, we would, we would shorten it to two. If we had four, we could, we could make it go four. Um, if it has to be fall or spring, I, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. So, um, there, there's, there's enough, the only thing I would add is that there's an interesting tie in here to me, to the UAS community, because there's, there's. And I'm trying to remember a, a presentation or somebody who was working on, I think it was, it wasn't at um, 
in your your team, uh, Matthias, um, who is doing a little work about how good weather forecasting had to be for UAS operations. I, I think there's a real interesting tie into looking yep. at how good we are today and what we're doing today. And then, you know, it wouldn't be the whole topic, but a piece of that topic could be, you know, for, for UAS operations that UPS is doing, for example, this is the kind of stuff you need and this is where we are today and this is the big gaps that we have getting there. I, I don't want to do all of the, the, the subject in UAS, obviously, but at least a piece of it. So I don't know, that, that's just something that crossed my mind as I've been hearing some of the UAS stuff. So, so this could really be for large transport aviation, general aviation and low level operations all together in some fashion or another. If that's the case, it would be a longer session, um, I think. Be a full day. Yeah. Well, and, and Matthias, just so, you, so that you know, and, and Steve, so you know where, where I was going. Um, you, you know, in the spring, we're talking about having Dave Chorney's review of the federal aviation weather research efforts that are out there. And, and it, 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 it seems like there's a natural synergy between this topic and that topic. Mm -hmm. This topic says, here's where we are, here's where we need to go. And then Dave's group would say, here's what we're working on. You know, that that to me made sense. And that's why I was asking how long it was. Right. So you could also think in terms of the uh, the federal review, you have the Air Force in there. You may have, you know, the uh, uh, NASA in there. You have the Army or the Navy talk about their things and they're using unmanned aerial systems and they have low level operations and they have weather needs so this could actually work nicely hand in hand to me it was a natural tie-in but uh but it seems like it's about three and a half days as opposed to a day and a half <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you need to kind of separate it out to help organize you you go with part 107 world and how the weather affects just your normal person doing line of sight flights versus going beyond visual line of sight increasing the weight of the aircraft going past the 107 getting the exemptions and how the weather applies to the two different groups because i would say there's there's two completely different buckets of application right. there yeah hey matt this is john steventon can you hear me yes sir yeah i had a suggestion uh you know taking advantage of this this idle time or this pause as one of the other callers had, had referred to um would any of these session topics be briefable by July and could we possibly do another uh, one topic briefing like we did yesterday in July? Uh, I, I really looked like the, the, the yesterday how it went and I, and I felt like we had a lot of participation in having one topic to discuss um, and only focus on that one seems to seems to work pretty well. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I only have one thought John and that's that um, <laughs> that the organizer and the and the presenters just, just have a lot of work to do, and that's my only thought. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. I wish somebody was paying me to do it. <laughs> okay, all right. And, and then my other suggestion was going to be, it would be great if we could do this quarterly with one topic a quarter and have the annual meeting kind of be the brief back of lessons learned or action items uh, and that be a, the annual meeting be a compilation of the quarterly meetings but i get it it's, it's the bandwidth and, and we all don't have as much as we wish we had so tom ryan breaking in that that could be a good way to do our updates The quarterly or which way? Have the, um, the the standard sessions that we've been having spring and fall, the bigger sessions, but then on the off quarters have the updates. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, it's, I, I hear you and I, I, I sort of have to echo Matt from that. <laughs> Recognizing these sessions is a fair amount of work. I mean, Matt and I and others are on the phone weekly, on a weekly basis, trying to nudge and shape these things and just adding two more meetings or so in there. Uh, I I start screaming. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> and my is limited. Maybe it's just my batteries are getting old. I don't know. <laughs> 
I can testify to that. <laughs> no, I, 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 guys, honestly, I, 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 I think that's. I think what you're saying right now is probably the right idea. It's the right shape. It's the right cadence. Um, doing a one day only, you know, with one topic and and you know, sp spreading it out over it doesn't even have to be six and a half hours like it was yesterday it could be five hours from 11 to 4 or something like that um you know and then having a on the in-between meetings or maybe three of the meetings and the fourth one as an in-person you know multi-day meeting there, there's a there's a it makes a ton of sense i just i'm i'm <laughs> i'm right there with matthias because um you know, Matthias and I meet with the session, as you well know, Tom and and Steve. I mean, and uh, uh, Gordy and John. Um, you know, we we meet with the and Steve. We meet with the session co-leads every other week, beginning shortly after uh, shortly after this call is over. We'll start meeting with our session co-leads for the fall meeting, and then in between those, meet, Matthias and I talk on the off weeks. So. Um, you know, it, it doesn't seem like much. And if all we did was got on the phone and yacked at each other for an hour, then it wouldn't be that much. But typically there's something that we assign each other to do in between the meetings that it starts adding up in a in a pretty big hurry. So I don't want to sound I, I don't want to sound either ungrateful or unappreciative. I think you're right. Um, and and I just I just. I, I'm, I'm, it concerns me. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm old enough where, where I've got my eyes pretty well trained with my stomach, and right now it's, it's, they're in sync with one another. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And uh, Dave, Dave Strand just made a, um, made a, a uh, comment about. Um, you know, as as the weather COI stands up and um, and perhaps a more defined role or uh, way of doing for business for FPA evolves, then that may in turn drive an evolution of the FPA meetings, of the FPA meeting cadence, um, and and um, I, I think it's a valid a valid point. Yeah. I'm taking a deep breath here. <laughs> <laughs> because my my assumption would be if there was it became more of a uh, formalized requirement, well then bandwidths, both personnel and financial might be increased as the need, you know, evolves. But I, I think we'll be a lot smarter maybe in that way by this time next year and can then maybe come up with justification for um, the resources needed to um, you know increase the uh, frequency of the format you know and I, i'm i'm sorry i'm i'm gonna wax philosophic here but the fpa is the only that i'm aware of gathering of its kind anywhere where the producers, the users, the regulators, the academicians, and the researchers of aviation weather get together in one place and exchange information. And and um, I, I, I would I would love to see it, you know, get into a, 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 a more increased cadence because I think we could I think we could actually do more and instead of talking to ourselves more frequently, we could do stuff more frequently. But but M Matthias has such a wonderful sense of patience and loves to use the word nudge, which I'm adopting in my vocabulary more frequently. And I, I think we're I think we're now talking about an F paw nudge that is maybe maybe pent up against the door and one of these days will come through the door and will nudge us in a direction. And, and we're still, you know, trying to get used to uh, being a little more hands on, working more of the uh, Internet presence and social media presence. And there's a lot of things that we could do. 
And with limited time on a volunteer basis, we have to be careful as to what we bite off. And I would rather do a little less and do it a little better than too much and everything is half-baked. But mm -hmm. that's just my personal opinion. Anyhow, Matthias, back to you. It looks like you got uh, you got things in color buckets that, that maybe make sense. That's what I was trying to do. And so if we can look maybe a little here to the side, if we can do that. Do you see actually those the, the, on the left, the other slides? OK, you may or may not be able to read them, but if I make them a little bigger here, then maybe that works. So on the fall meeting, we still had a leftover topic on winter weather that Josh Paros has proposed at some point. Uh, now I've lost the other one here. <laughs> and uh, so the question is, do we have enough interest on winter weather? I think he said he can only do the fall and not necessarily the spring. That's why it was sliding here to and this could be a half day or it could be less. I mean, if it's just his uh, focus on runway friction and what Minneapolis and Denver are doing jointly with trying to do the winter weather maintenance and prediction of runway friction, etc. This could be a smaller piece or it could be beefed up as to the to include topics that I have there in terms of the broader picture of preparing and maintenance and, and the management of of winter weather events, which obviously has different perspectives from a traffic flow, airport and airline perspectives. And there's maybe regulatory updates too with, with Talpa and stuff that could be woven into it. So this could make for a nice session that could be two to four hours, you know, in that time frame. So we would have still on the ideal scenarios if we have a full day, a, a day and a half, like an in-person meeting, in the fall, which is still a, a, a big assumption, I think, in in light of where things are headed. But so we would still have another two major topics, half day topics that would fit in there, or we could make smaller pieces. And so if I look at what we have over here with the opportunities uh, from the pandemics, pause and reset, this is certainly a half day, I would say here. So that would fill one of those slots on the left. And then the graphical tools and, and whether in the cockpit, possibly with CDM combined, that could also be a half a day, plus some updates here maybe on standing things. That would easily fill the fall meeting. Is someone trying to chime in here? I hear some noises. Well, this is Rocky saying, I mean, we could do the graphical weather in a couple hours. Um, right. If you're trying to squeeze it in. And I'm right. just trying to think in terms of what's possible. And if we start planning on a day and a half under ideal scenarios, if it turns out that we cannot meet in person and have to do another virtual then we may end up having to squeeze the agenda again and, and see where can we take something out or what can we defer, etc. So it's I'm, I'm trying to keep the options open here. And in my opinion, uh, Matthias, the the one that should be squeezed is the top one, the, the pandemic opportunities, and we should let the graphical weather tool in the cockpit and cockpit CDM have the, the the full Bonte's share of time, in my opinion. So let's do that as a topic three here. And and I'm only doing that for, for self-preservation purposes. Yeah, 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 I hear you. <laughs> but Matt, just to, to, I agree, and I'm also, I'm really intrigued by the topic of cockpit CDM. I, I know it's been covered in different arenas, but I think that's such a ripe area for our aviation weather interests, and I, I would I would like to devote some time to that. And I'm sure Rocky can probably cover a lot in that session. So I think that's good. Yeah, I I would love to re, uh, Rocky. I'd love to 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 reconvene the group that met back in 2007 or six when 
you and Joe Burns were sitting on one side of the room with one set of opinions, and Bill Lieber and I were sitting on the other side of the room with another set of opinions. That'd be that'd be fun to, to do that from a graybeard perspective. And I bet the opinions haven't changed. <laughs> I'll bet you you're right. <laughs> Then we would also have a quick catch all on various topics as needed, including like the weather COI, maybe. Yeah, I that, that, yeah, and I would I would guess to, to the conversation earlier, you know, that's a that's a 15 to 30 minute update just to say that that it's met. Here's who's in it. Here's what we're looking at. Have a nice day. And 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 we're and we're trying to figure out how FPA fits in. When we figure it out, we'll let you know. Have a nice day. Uh, Steve Dyer is also going to want to, and he's already had said this in the in the chat, going to want to update on on uh, again what has happened with the ADSB weather uh, version three um, uh, native or optional question, I guess, and any other changes that have come out. Okay. Don't forget about a VWAS update. Oh yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. God, it's a good thing we have our conscience here. Okay, so this is all getting a little messy and will have to be cleaned up, but at least we have kind of the buckets in the right place. Um, Matthias, did, did, I, I've, I've seen your email conversations with Josh. Um, you know, do, do you in your head have him as, as leading this session or is he just going to be a contributor to that session? Uh, that's a good question. I think where he sits and what he does, it would be nice for him to take the lead on the winter weather because that's his bread and butter, what, as, among other things, obviously. But uh, he would definitely need help, especially if we make it broader and get traffic flow and other perspectives in there. Yeah. Yeah, Matt, this is my... Uh... Matt number three or four or whatever. Uh, <laughs> uh, on the on the winter weather stuff, uh, one of the things I saw when I was up in Kodiak was the runway condition code notums and misinterpretation between airport personnel and what flight service would enter. Uh, so I think uh, runway condition code notums and that may be a good addition to the winter weather one. Uh, and and Matt, my brother Matt, is that FICONs you're referring to? Uh, well, they don't. They're not using uh, runway con or FICONs for that. It's uh, it's a runway contamination code. So it, this is the Talpa stuff. It's, right. It's the new notums that came out a couple. Uh, what is it? Two years ago that uh, they go out check the runway and it's uh, based on contamination, not just on braking action. So. Uh, it can be anything from uh, water on the runway to ice to snow, uh, and it's done for every runway, and then a notum's issued for every runway every time they update it. And saw a lot of uh, confusion between uh, what the airport personnel would say and what flight service may disseminate. Having a discussion on this in the fall would make sense leading up into the next winter. Then. Um, hey, Jorney, can you mute yourself, please? Oh, sorry, it's the runway condition assessment matrix is what is what we're talking about for these codes. It's called the RCAN. That's what Telpa designed, uh, developed. I was part of that group. So. Yeah, and for that reason, I would think we'd want to have flight standards uh, definitely involved in this effort. I'm, I'm sure it would evolve that way regardless, but. Uh, you know, Gordy, whether it's you got you or John or or whoever is the the the, the winter weather flight standards guru, that they, they I would think they need to be somehow engaged in this. Yeah, I was involved since 2006, so um, I'd be the right person, I guess. <laughs> so I can put you down as a explicit. That's fine. Okay. We all work together. I'll support Gordy on that. That was and, John. And, uh, Matt, Matt Tucker, is this something that you, from your your tower manager at Kodiak experience, sure. would be a good contributor? Sure, I'll, I'll I'll jump on there too. It's 
So we already have different perspectives here. And I'm not mentioning your colleague, Matt, that would have something to say in that era too, based on past work he did. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. I have a feeling. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so let's see. I think we have a full house for the fall meeting here that needs to be massaged as we move forward. And then the spring meeting is pretty much a full house too, as we look at what we've got here. Let's see. Uh, we have this one. Well, this was a good one here, I think, because that ties into the state of the affair from the different agencies, what they're doing. And then the UAS, that's kind of, well, actually, let me pick this one first because that could be an outcome out of this that fits into that. And the UAS could potentially fit in there too, depending on how much time we have. But it's kind of filling up here. <laughs> so let's look at the fall meeting here. So we would have three areas. One, a winter weather that depends to how far we want to craft it, how large it becomes. Then uh, graphical tools in the cockpit related to CDM usage and stuff like that, which is also that's certainly a half day. And then the out of the box thinking in terms of related to the current situation and what opportunities may arising from that combined with some catch all updates. This is filling one and a half days unless I'm mistaken here. Does that sound like a reasonable plan to move forward with? Seems reasonable to me, Matthias. It's Mike. OK. Do I hear any opposing thoughts from the audience? And now it's a little difficult with with everybody chiming in, but I would like to get a sense. Can we start crystallizing this and say this is our target for the fall? Maybe, Matthias, this is Steve. Maybe not opposing thoughts, but something to think about that I mentioned in a, in a chat earlier. You know, I'm, I'm hearing that the federal federal folks are, are not even thinking they're going to get to work until September. I mean, what is the real likelihood that this is going to be a face to face meeting in the fall. And and if so, what is our strategy to not turn this into PowerPoint death in in, a, in two days on on a, I mean, I, I, you know, sounds like the bearer of bad news, but we ought to try to come up with a, a, a contingency plan, maybe not today, but a contingency plan if this is going to be remote again. Yes, I fully agree with you, Steve. This is important. And we were caught a little off guard with the spring meeting and had to react to it. And I think we were able to handle it. And so looking forward at the fall meeting, maybe we can prior uh, prioritize these topics in terms of if we were to do this uh, virtual again, which ones do we want to keep on the agenda? And which ones could we possibly defer or make it shorter? Would that help to have kind of in the pocket how we shape it where we may have a buffer in there? I think so. Either that or agree that, you know, if, if it's if it's going to be something that we're doing remotely, it's going to be something that you've got to, you know, keep your presentation, you know, keep your section to just two hours and that and that's it or something like that. Yep. Yep. And maybe that's what we can discuss, Matt Fronzak. Uh, and I, with the session leads, as we start shaping this, what are our options if we have the full time versus if we have reduced time uh, and build that into the planning moving forward here? I already have an opinion or two, but I think I will just sit on my opinions for now. <laughs> OK. So I think. I hear no other sentiments here one way or another. So I would say the fall meeting, we have a plan 
that needs to be further massaged, cleaned up, and you know executed upon. And the spring meeting looking ahead, which obviously is still way out there, but it's looking to shape up related to review of federal weather activities and related things in terms of forecasting science and and how good do we have to be in order to be beneficial for decision making and the weather community of interest is a piece in there as well. Does that make sense for a outlook towards the spring and we may revisit that in the fall meeting as we get you know closer we probably won't work on this in terms of actually shaping it in in depth but as an outlook does that make sense the way it's sort of sitting here just looking at topic one which we carried over yeah this is steve dar uh, i'm wondering whether the fa weather community of interest is essentially what will be briefed in that it, it is a piece in there, yeah. Unless Bill Bauman is, is telling me completely different. Steve, I couldn't hear your question. Could you repeat that? I was just wondering whether or not the, uh, the federal agency weather activities, if the FAA's contribution to that would be this community of interest piece and if if we really do have three topics at this point, or if if that would be subsumed by topic one. Well, topic one is is pretty much a full day because we also like to have a panel discussion in there to to address opportunities for coordination, collaboration, etc. And the weather community of interest may be a, a means of doing so as well. Yeah, that could fit in there. I'm not trying to shoehorn it. I just wondered if if we sort of lost sight of it since we didn't really talk about topic one because we already had it from the last meeting. Could could uh, Matthias? Could we ask Dave Chorney to uh, to chime in here and 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 maybe give us his um, uh, input on uh, you, you know given everything that has been discussed uh, both yesterday and today and thinking about maybe what, what we had in mind to do with this. Um, Dave, is this a half day or a full day or is it three hours or is it an hour and a half? What, what, what's your opinion about that? For, for my group that we were going to do, we were going to yeah. do a half day, weren't we? For the uh, comparison of weather group of, of aviation weather. I think we had about six hours carved out for it by the time push came to shove between the between the presentations and the and the ongoing discussions and then the then the overall panel discussion at the end of it. OK, yeah, I knew I knew it was at least four hours, so I just couldn't remember offhand. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's probably between four and six hours. Yes, that's probably true. I don't think we need a whole day of eight hours. But um, but probably more than a half a day. Yeah, I mean, if you look around, I remember that one slide, Dave, that you put together about where weather always fits in the various agencies. That this was a lot, and then obviously aviation is a somewhat smaller piece, but it's still a lot of different agencies and pockets where aviation plays into it and weather plays a key role in it. So I, I think we had a, a good amount of uh, participation lined up, but I think we still missed quite a few pockets that we have a little more time to maybe solicit uh, participation from. Well, here, I just pulled up. This was the list I had of speakers that I had positives on. I had FAA with Bill Bauman, National Fire Programs Division with Richard Patrick from FEMA, National Airway System Engineering, NACE, with uh, Mehdi um, Rashid Diffard, if I said that right, from the FAA. We also had Navy um, with Kevin LaCroix, at Air Force with Rob Brandon, Weather Service Aviation Weather Center, Jonathan Leffer. Um, I didn't confirm a name with uh, UAS's uh, drones, but 
we because we kind of canceled it, so I didn't follow up. Yeah, we also have NOAA HRD with Robert Rogers, and then NASA LARC with uh, Tuami Daniels. Yeah. So those are the ones I had uh, that were definite. And what like you said, we were working on getting a few more. Yeah, I think the Army is missing here. It might. Yeah, I didn't have anybody listed for that, but it wouldn't hurt to have them too. Yep. Although aviation weather for Army comes from the Air Force. To a certain degree, yes. But to a certain degree, they complement that with their own things. Yeah, I mean, but the weather part is all done by the Air Force. Army doesn't have weather people. That's they have true. Air Force guys do Army support. Yes, but the U.S., the low-level operations, they do their own weather. For the test ranges, they support okay. their U.S. operations. Okay. And then these are the kinds of folks I tried to reach out and I couldn't nail them down. So we need to make sure we have them next year in the spring. Agree. Okay. So, so what it sounds like to me, though, uh, then is that is that topic one plus a shorter topic, whether it be updates, whether it be uh, whether COI plus plus you know more of these um, uh, old business updates would would easily take up a full day, leaving then a half day for um, for for what you have uh, there the the state and. Uh, future of forecasting science, which which leads me to wonder out loud, uh, what happened to the UAS topic that we had? Has that been subsumed? Have I just missed that, or did that just? Nope. It's still here, but it it's not clear where we can meaningfully fit it because it's a substantial piece. So, so let me, at the risk of going outside and shooting myself in the head, let me ask uh, Marilyn, Don, Bill, and Justin, do we want to try to mentally pencil in a, a virtual only meeting? So it would be therefore shorter in time, a one day, between the fall and the spring meeting, perhaps in the January, February timeframe where we could do this? Bill Moss is up for that. I don't mind, I think that would work. Um, I, a couple of thoughts as far as that time frame. In December, two of the new rules for UAS are going to be published. And I think uh, we'll look to see how we incorporate weather standards into those new regulations. So that might be a good time for an update on how we're integrating weather into the operational requirements for UAS. So that will go on this list here as an update. Well, I think what Marilyn was suggesting is that if we did this meeting in that time frame, it would be timely with respect to these new rules having been published and they as be part of that standalone meeting. Yes. That, that's, yes. That's, what, that's how I interpreted your words, Marilyn. Please tell me if I misinterpreted. No, that's correct. So that was, what did you say, Matt, January, February? Yeah, yeah, right around AMS time. Woohoo! Hey, would that be an AMS session? Ooh. Ooh. In fact, Ooh. that would actually hit two birds with one stone. Ooh. I'm sorry, I was dozing. I heard AMS. <laughs> <laughs> Said the AMS program co-chair so for the 2021 we're, meeting. We're talking here whether this could be a standalone uh, meeting and potentially in the January or February time frame uh, talking about UAS weather related things and standards. And that made me just think out loud, could this be a session at the ARAM conference? Well, it very well could be. I mean, obviously, as you know, it's the, the whole focus on 
on UAS and UAS weather is is becoming a very significant mm -hmm. emphasis at ARAM. Mm -hmm. And I think this topic of standards in particular is something that probably hasn't gotten the attention that it will get in the future and there's no time like the present. So it's definitely yeah, something and, we can consider. Yeah, and 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 just to this is again where where oh my gosh, Mike, these these <laughs> These things seem to be converging on a place. It just so happens that the ARAM chair and the ARAM 2021 program chair are also on this call and participating in this. So um, I'm I'm thinking that this could be made to happen if if FPA wished to kind of jointly with ARAM conduct a, a meeting. And, and from my perspective, hey, why the hell not? I'm just yeah, I can bring it forward into that into that venue, and I'd be uh, happy if, if if Marilyn and Don were still want to kind of, you know, we'll have to see what abstracts could come in on this topic, of course. So it's not quite the same control as as we would have under this community. So you've got to think about that. Um, but Marilyn, Marilyn and Don could chair that session, and maybe we can even make it a little bit of a. You know, I hesitate to, to get too far out of my my swim lane because I I, I do have guardrails on it. But <laughs> maybe even like, maybe a little bit of a panel type type um, accommodation there as well. Yeah, and uh, but the thing is, yes, if you wait just for the abstracts to come in and then see what you've got, that's one thing. But if if uh -huh. we really want to do this, yep. we have to solicit. We have to reach out and say, you need to be submitting an yep. abstract, and you need and to be submitting an abstract, et yep. cetera, et cetera. And we, we can do that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. And in some uh, ways, I feel like this would actually be a nice way to not create extra meetings, but use existing platforms to facilitate a dialogue along those lines. I, I, I agree in spades. Um, uh, let me let me just open this particular conversation up to, uh, to 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 comments from the the 40 people who are on this call right now. Oh, Matt, this is Bill. I'm not sure. I thought, are you including the the public private partnerships in that discussion, or is that a separate thing? I'm not sure. I follow. I would I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthias, that everything inside that box would be, you know, in play for this session or even depending on how much interest there was, these sessions at ARAM in January of 2021 in Nolens. Oh, I would concur with that because I, I, I still contend that that the UAS is going to drive this uh, private partnership with the and I wouldn't disagree with what Justin said about uh, he, he and Don may have some disagreement, but to me, it's not a question of either or. It, Justin's going to figure out a way to be competitive and have his own shop, but there will be other parties that don't have their own shop that are going to have to use whether from from the private sector, because sometimes, as we all know, the government can be a little slow in bringing stuff forward just because of their nature. So I I think that, that again, UAS has let the tiger out of the bag and we've got to deal with that. Don Birchoff looks like he wants to say something. Yeah, I just got back. I had to go on another call. I, I agree with everything you just said. I think Justin and UPS and Amazon, they're, you know, they're going to have their own weather shops. Uh, but they're also not going to have their own data necessarily. They'll have some of their own data. They're going to require data from a lot of different sources. So that's the first thing. The other thing is there's a lot of flyers out there that are not part of Amazon or UPS or any of those guys, and they're going to require these SDSPs through the UTM, right? That's how they're going to get their data. So, and you're right, it's going to be a private sector driven thing because the quality, you know, we need to make sure that, you know, people are going to pay for, they're going to have to pay for better support. I mean, it's just the way it is. We're not going to have a, a one kilometer model running over the CONUS, you know, in, in our in our time frame because, we, you know, it takes time to get the computing resources and all that. So I agree with that. And um, it is going to be the UAS that's going to drive the public private partnership. Yeah. 
I'm Could still I here. I'm still here. On that? I agree with Don. Um, I agree with Don, and, and I come at this obviously from a regulatory perspective and not mere meteorological. Um, what we're doing right now internally is focusing on putting weather standards, performance-based standards, into the waiver special provisions and the conditions and limitations attached to the exemptions with the hope that that will drive uh, some action on the part of the users, the end users, the operators, the private sector, if you will, to be creative and stimulate their uh, response to how they're going to determine weather in the operating environment. So I think that the hope is that the private and public sector will contribute more. Um, so I could also speak to John Leffler, you're correct. The HEMS tool um, doesn't do enough. It doesn't uh, satisfy the boundary layer and not granular enough. And uh, it doesn't um, deal with the latency issue that we need for the low level operations for UAS below 400 feet. But that is a challenge of the weather going into the HEMS tool. The tool is just a matter of how to visualize the information relative to ground level. And, and speaking of HEMS, um, I, I would be remiss if I did not say hello to Eric Lugger, who's on the call, I think, and uh, who, who maybe we might call the, the granddaddy of HEMS way back when. Hi, Eric. How, how are you, uh, Matt Three? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 the fact that this is is a uh, a virtual uh, meeting has allowed me. I'm, I'm completely retired, and uh, except for a little consulting here and there, and uh, travel is a challenge nowadays for me. So one thing I would suggest is provisions for the virtual opportunity for those that can't travel in the future for the meetings. We've heard that uh, message in spades ever since yesterday ended. <laughs> so we have our challenges. Um, and if you would like to contribute to the um, to the, um, the the FPA virtual meeting fund, we would we would gladly take that and put it somewhere so that we could buy the 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 resources that we need to to uh, to meet at the NTSB where there are no virtual um, hosting capabilities in that in that internet black hole known as the NTSB conference room. <laughs> Matt, there's maybe a way to do that, that we have an, an app on the side of the FPA website where you can sw swipe your credit card and <laughs> get a donation in there, and that gives you the information for the call in for the meeting. Yeah, yeah, now we're talking. <laughs> Anyhow, sorry, I, I saw Eric's name there. I said, oh my gosh, I haven't talked to him in eons. Okay. Well, going back to ARAM, Mike, I believe I threw in a session placeholder that sort of is a catch all related to weather needs for emerging modes of transportation. I don't remember exactly what I formulated in, but there is a, a placeholder session in there for the ARAMs. Uh, conference. Yeah, I, I think this is a little different though and a little bit more specialized. And I also think the um, that separate topic you just mentioned still has so much ground to cover. Um, the ARAM we just finished, I think we had across UAS and UAM at least three sessions and, and, and maybe, maybe four. So um, there's no reason why just because you have a, if this is what you mean, Matthias, just because we have that topic already submitted, which is a, a broad and dense topic that we can't also have this one as well. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not saying either or. I'm just saying there is a placeholder bucket for yeah. repeated things where if we don't put an extra session list that explicitly. We no, I'll, I'll capture it and I'll bring it forward to the final um, session topic. Um, list that um, myself and Pat Murphy are going to be um, finalizing. Right. OK. Good. Is this is uh, is ARAMS the same week as AMS again this year coming up? Yes, sir. Always it well, always is too big a word. Uh, we, we are holding a full four day 
ARAM conference at the AMS annual meeting every year. That is our intention going forward. Oh, okay. I got it. Okay, good. It's 10th to 14th of January, 2021. In New Orleans. Um, while Matthias is typing, um, I, I hope he doesn't mind. I'd like to actually reach out to Matt Eckstein, who I thought had some really, um, really very, very good comments early in our meeting today about um, about having the best of intentions of of getting all you know all, all the topics put together. Um, but maybe through no fault of our own, overlooking others because we perhaps don't reach out or engage. I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth here now, Matt. But but would, would you would you expand on that just a little bit? I'm I'm intrigued by that and wonder if there's a there there that we shouldn't pursue. Well, unfortunately, this is not Matt three. Uh, he had to he had to move off to another call and ask me oh. to cover for him. Oh, sorry, Bill. Uh, but uh, I, I do think his input would be very valuable. And I think what he was trying to say was that uh, there's just a, a plethora of, of users out there and, and we just need to make sure that we don't bucket uh, our topics such that it almost goes back to that a public private partnership we were talking about it's it's a whole new world out there and uh, that's all i can say to what he was thinking but I, i'll ask him to send you an email uh, as a follow-up but he did have to get on another call thank you bill i appreciate that so matt where do you think we stand do we have enough in our buckets to look forward to planning a fall meeting and a spring meeting and possibly ARAM sessions? I, I would say that our cup runneth over. Um, I would say that um, that if we go virtual in the fall, um, that that we are almost forced to go virtual again following the spring meeting, you know, maybe in the summer sometime to catch up with what we've dropped off you know sort of situation and that we do need to prioritize if we had to if we had to go virtual in the fall what what would fall out and then be shoved ahead um to uh either the spring and shoving something else out of it to summer or 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 shoved forward to the summer um i, I think i think that we have we are two meetings ahead of where we are right now and I think they are all really neat and interesting topics. Um, I think we've heard loudly and clearly, at least I have, that 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 as as the role of FPA evolves and and work is carried on between meetings on either FPA positions or particular topics that need to be fleshed out, that that we have a need to. Um, to do an old old business sounds so old a, a review of what we have going on and updates to it where it is. Um, I, I think between yesterday and today we've we've heard gratitude for the um, the, the virtual meeting capability, and um, I, I'm just thinking out loud here right now. And and Mike and Dave and and any of the other MITRE folks that are on the line. I, I don't know how I would approach Tom Becker about saying, can I have a couple of thousand dollars to to set up AV at the NTSB? But I wonder if I could go to Tom Becker and say, Tom, can I can I borrow some of the AV folks for a day and a half and have them work the AV angle at the NTSB? How do you think that would go over? I uh, can't hurt to ask. Um, he likes to think outside the box, so I, I think it's a, I think it's a possibility. Okay. It's certainly outside the building. Yeah. <laughs> like the it is. I think it could be broached, Matt. I, I think to me it feels like an easier ask than asking him for a couple of thousand dollars to go spend on on an FPA meeting in somebody else's building. Yeah. So guys, here's 
here's another thought that um, that might be a little more general purpose solution to, to these kind of problems. Uh, what if we did something like uh, put in place a hundred dollar registration fee for every attendee? Um, <laughs> we have no attendees. <laughs> well, I I doubt that it would change the attendance at all. And it would give us a slush fund of ten thousand dollars per meeting to help us, so, so that we don't go to, to people uh, empty-handed and say we are paupers, you know, and we need your, uh, you know, we need your charity. Uh, at least we could go with something in hand uh, as an offering. Man, Bruce, you know how your car works. If we start getting registration fees. That this opens a whole other can of worms. Who said we have to do it? <laughs> ah, I see where you're going. Do you want to take this on as a retiree, as a retired person, Bruce? I see Matt Frontek uh, rocking in his chair there. I think, <laughs> you know, Mida certainly, thinking... certainly doesn't have a problem charging uh, registration fees for conferences. I'm thinking ABC LLC would has a kind of a nice ring to it. <laughs> Actually, I want to throw in a caution, and that's you know, just from us airline point of view. Um, yeah, we, you know, is a one dollar registration fee would keep us from going today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, so just uh, we we need to be. I, I mean, I understand the need and the desire, but we need to be careful. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I agree too. And and um, and another thing that 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 you know I've I've thought is that is that you know we could say if if virtual meetings become a you know a a you know such a staple of our of our toolkit that we can't that we can't let them go, then what it might do is reorient where we can go or even when we can go and where we can go um and and i mean at the end of the day right money's about options and and if we had money we, we we'd have options for answers but without money we're we're somewhat beholden to miters and end cars and and um and and any other organization that can support teleconferencing natively and hold a hundred to 150 people in their room. I'm not sure uh, what's going to happen in NCAR, but I suspect uh, when the IT people start digging into what is required to do a, a joint uh, conference room and tele and um, and virtual meetings, uh, they're going to find out that there are costs involved that somebody will. That's the older, no kids. We have done it before, Bruce, and but the costs are a lot less than if we go nope. and have to bring in commercial uh, entities yeah. into NTSB or NBAA. That's the that's North Carolina, right? Justin is having lunch. <laughs> I I muted Justin. <laughs> At least I thought I did. Okay, he was unmuted. <laughs> well, Matt, I think we talked a lot about things. We have plenty of topics. I don't necessarily want to drag this meeting on just for the sake of having this virtual meeting and chatting <laughs> with each other. Uh, I'd rather have a beer with each other, but that's a different story. So. You, you know, you... I, I, I'm, I'm compelled here to comment, Matias, that you've mentioned drinking three times in the last 18 hours. Are you okay? <laughs> no. I, <missed laughs> <the problem. laughs> I counted four. Was it? Oh, I missed one. Sorry. I like his style. <laughs> I think we should have a virtual happy hour. Ooh. We do things already, yeah. So, so Matthias, um, I, I think I'll have to hold one up for everybody. Oh, no. <laughs> right behind me. 
is, is my bar because I've been delegated to the basement by my wife, but it's a finished basement. <laughs> but this is really, you know, just a prop. So <laughs> I'm not actually drinking on the job, everybody. <laughs> Bill, I was so impressed until you dropped up that thing upside down and nothing. <laughs> I was going to grab well, a beer and say, well, Bill Bowman has one, but now I can't. <laughs> you, you know, guys, I remember being uh, on an IATA committee in the mid 1990s and going to the Moon Over Water pub in uh, where the hell was that day? The Moon Over Water? Uh, in, uh, that was an air, wasn't it? Uh, no, 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 no. This is down near near Gatwick, where where I auto was. In any event, oh, oh, yeah. We we go there for lunch, and the European guys would all order beer, and I'd say, "You can't do this. This this is illegal, immoral." And then they, then I watched them. I said, "You know, they got a good idea here. I think I'm going to start behaving like them." <laughs> okay, Matt. Do we wrap it up? I think so, unless uh, unless there are any other comments from anybody. I, I must say to, to everybody that this both of these days have worked out better than I would have ever imagined. And and uh, so so thank you for being such good, um, knowledgeable and and um, experienced telecon participants. We we had very few instances of open mics or people stepping on one another, and that's that's really a testament to, to you all. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Uh, I'm good with that. Very I'll good. You, Matt. So we bid you all adieu. Thank you very much for all your inputs. And um, as soon as I can figure out how to, uh, to, to get all this captured stuff out to Matthias and Rhonda for the website, you'll see it on the FPA website. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Well done. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Good job, everybody. Very nice job, Matt. And, um, Another Steve. job well done. I think I'll go get a beer now. <laughs>